today i'm going to be sharing with you guys what i think the top five most powerful armies are for free to play players in rise of kingdoms what's going on guys cheers now i've been meaning to update this guide for a while now and i've seen other content creators share what they think are the best open field armies or the best armies in rise of kingdoms so today i figured i would throw in my two cents but first i want to share with you guys a brand new game that i think looks really cool grand cross w grand cross w is a brand new 4x strategy game from netmarble based on an all new anime ip you guys know i love strategy games so i'm excited to share that netmarble is giving you all the chance to try grand cross w for free and test out the game to provide feedback for them between august 20th and 29th you can expand and customize your territory join an alliance capture world objects and join server versus server wars there's a ton to explore in this world so there's something for everybody from the casual pve player to those that love the hardcore pvp so discover your new anime strategy adventure with me go ahead and click the link in the description below to try out this beta for free anytime between now and august 29th on android and pc devices and of course if you participate in the beta with the link down below you're gonna get some exclusive perks not only are you guys gonna get to experience all of the game's content but you're also gonna be able to unlock exclusive skins for your character and your castle when the game first launches so what are you guys waiting for go ahead and try the beta with the link down below and of course I want to thank Grand Cross W for sponsoring today's video without amazing sponsors like them videos like this wouldn't be possible all right without further ado let's jump right into the tier maker now the way that i have this set up is we're going to go over five pairs and i'm not saying that this is in any particular order meaning i'm not saying pair one is better than pair four for example and i also am not saying that you should invest in pair one before you invest in pair five but what i am saying is that if you're a free-to-play player or a low spender having at least three out of these five marches probably puts you in a pretty good place and you can sort of decide what makes the most sense for your account based on where it is right now but if there is going to be a best pair in this video it's going to be Guan Yu with CPO now this is again this isn't really in any particular order but I do think that uh for this one exception I think this is probably the best open field pair that you can have in rise of kingdoms right now especially considering the fact that you could do a 5155 guan yu um as you can see here in one of my recent live streams i did actually go ahead and get the expertise here because you have so many cpos in the open field these days that the probability that you're going to gain a shield is much higher now than it's been in the past so having that extra skill damage bonus is going to be beautiful whether it lands on guan yu or whether it lands on the cpo secondary because both of them have a 2000 damage factor which is absolutely insane this synergy here with these two commanders is just unparalleled and I do think that this is the best open field pair in the game with or without the Guan Yu expertise if you primarily focus on cavalry or if you primarily focus on archers it doesn't matter I still think that this pair is so good that you should have this infantry set in your murder ball at some point you would just be doing yourself a disservice by not having this next let's talk about a cavalry pair now I'm going to talk about Nevsky and there's a few different options that you can pair him with I would say overall in general uh the best pair that I think you can have with Nevsky is going to be William he's going to be all the way down here this to me is the best cavalry open field pair right now and I will give you some alternatives and and I'm not saying that this is the best in every scenario I'm just saying in general on average this is going to perform the best why is that well Nevsky obviously he is insane crazy single target damage factor debuffs tons of cavalry stats we love everything that Nevsky is bringing to the field he has the skill tree with the rage regeneration there's just so much to love about a Nevsky and William has that crazy AoE he has that utility with the extra rage for you and your allies he also gives you a defense bonus he deals extra damage when outside of your lines territory I mean he's really giving Nevsky a ton of extra things that he can do he's giving him the AoE that he's missing and overall he's just an exceptionally good pair whether he's with Nevsky or with Saladin both are insanely good now there are a few variations that you can do here um if you don't have William or if you're using William with somebody else like Saladin I do actually think 
that an Attila Nevsky is a really solid combination here. Now, remember, we're talking about free to play players. So Nevsky William is going to be easier to get as a free to play player, especially because Attila is, you know, mightiest governor. But they did also put the legendary chests in Season of Conquest Kingdoms. So you do actually have a way to get Attila now as free to play, which is incredible. But the reason that I like this combination so much is because when people see Attila in the open field, typically they avoid it he is a low priority to take out why because he's not doing aoe he's not really buffing his nearby allies he's not a massive threat unless he's hitting you and it's also pretty punishing to surround an attila there's a lot of damage that he can deal to multiple armies at the same time if he's being surrounded and he also gains a ton of extra rage when he's surrounded which means he's going to pop off his skills more often which means that active skill on Nevsky is really going to demolish the the target that he is hitting so I love this pair for free to play because it's sort of a, an incentive to get people to not hit you which as a free to play player or a low spender uh, that is what you want you don't want to get surrounded as a free to play or low spender realistically you don't want to be surrounded no matter what right but really minimizing the probability that you get surrounded by whales is is really what you want to do so this pair does that exceptionally well if you have your your hands on an Attila and the final like variation I want to talk about is Zhang Yu Nevsky a lot of people love this combination and a lot of people swear by it and of course the damage output here is through the roof however I would not recommend this to free to play players or low spenders because Zhang Yu is such a prime target not only is he dealing a ton of damage if you don't kill him quickly but he is so squishy that taking him out is very very easy if you can surround him so this basically if you have this combination as free to play with a bunch of blue and purple gear you're just going to get swarmed down and fill your hospital instantaneously right uh so this is kind of the opposite of the benefit that you get from uh, Attila Nevsky right so overall those are the three my my opinions on the three like primary Nevsky marches that we're seeing right now for free to play I would say Attila Nevsky is exceptionally good if you have Attila otherwise Nevsky William is going to be pretty easy for you to get your hands on and of course William 5551 is very very good you don't even have to expertise him in order to make him very powerful whereas Attila and Zhang Yu you really would want them to be expertise moving on to pair number three we're going to be talking about Boudicca with Yi Song Ye now this is a very squishy pair right and I think Boudicca definitely suffers some of the same downsides as a, a Zhang Yu right I'm not oblivious to that fact so of course having this relatively squishy March in your murder ball is going to put a big target on your back if you are a free to play or a low spender but here's the thing you probably have Yi Song Ye expertise okay most players do he's a very good investment and having that circular AOE is so so valuable in the open field so you really should pick someone to pair him with now as a free to play player getting your hands on Boudicca is going to be relatively easy once you get into season of conquest you can get her from the wheel of fortune you can get Yi Song from the wheel of fortune and I think that you know in the early game you're probably gonna have Isong so you want someone to pair him with right you don't want to waste that expertise just because you're in season conquest doesn't mean you should get rid of Isong yay he's super super good okay so Boudicca she's new to the game she's exceptionally good very powerful high single target damage she's a very good archer commander um but again there is that high risk that you get when you run this March so one alternative that you could do instead of Boudicca is actually go with a Nebu now Nebu is a little bit more tanky from what I've seen than a Boudicca uh however he is a mightiest governor commander now you also can get him again from the legendary tavern and if you're lucky you can get your Nebu to 5515 like I have here and that's a really good value investment whereas if you go for Boudicca you really do want to expertise her same thing with Isong Ye you really need to expertise him if you're going to be using him so Nebu may be a little bit harder to get than Boudicca but slightly more tanky and you have the chance at least of getting a value build out of him and I think for free to play players that is a really attractive route to go moving on to pair number four I'm going to go with Harold and Alex now this is a really good pair as an infantry pair it is a little bit more squishy than I would like it to be however as a free to play or low spender Alexander is a commander that you almost guaranteed will have expertise if you're following any YouTube guides anybody's advice people will tell you that Alexander the Great is 
a very high value investment you're going to get good value out of him for a very long time so when you're in the end game when you're in season of conquest don't put him on the bench he's absolutely still very good and very useful and i think harold is an exceptionally good use for alex in the late game now people used to do a guan yu primary with alex secondary but cpo is just infinitely better than alexander at this point they're very similar commanders but cpo just has aoe he has more shields like he's just so good okay cpo is basically alex 2.0 okay it's unbelievable how good he is sport tree is better than the attack tree everybody knows that so since you already probably have your alexander i really do think that harold is probably the best pair that you can do with them now one alternative to this is going to be martel i do think that a Harold Martel is going to be a much more tanky pair, especially because you can use the relic on Martel to give you even more attack and a little bit extra health that you already get from an expertise Martel. And Martel is a commander that you get from the gold keys. So this is absolutely somebody that you're going to have as a free to play player. So this is a pair that I would use if you're in KVK and you actually don't have very good control over the open field this is going to perform a little bit better than with the alex because alex even though he has more damage uh he just doesn't have the tankiness that you would want from martel and in either scenario i do actually prefer a herald primary because i do prefer the skill tree herald's going to be popping off a ton of skills which just gives him a built-in incredible rage engine overall herald primary is exceptional and i would say one of these two is going to be a very good fourth Pair. and now we get into the fifth pair and this is where it's probably going to differ for you guys uh quite a bit depending on which of these three you go with right did you go with the Attila over the William did you go with the Nebu over the Boudicca this is really what it's going to come down to when it comes to determining who your fifth pair should be and also are you focused more on infantry are you focused more on archers are you focused more on cavalry right here you can see we already have two infantry in the top five for free to play players so for most people i would say as free to player low spenders go for infantry focus on infantry go all in and if that's the case who should you put for your fifth pair well one recommendation that i would make that i think is not something that a lot of people have access to is going for pakal herald this i think is a very good pair for the same reason that attila nevsky is a good pair right uh seeing the pakal herald in the open field immediately tells the enemy that that is a low priority target why because if they surround it or they hit it they're very very punished right it deals a ton of damage to everyone nearby if they decide to hit it and really it's quite tanky so their trades aren't going to be that good and they don't know that you're a free-to-play player when they see the pakal in the open field they just see a pakal and they don't want to take the risk of it being a mega well if this is a mega wells pakal where it has all golden talented and iconic everything they are going to get destroyed if they surround it so at first glance they're not going to know that it's a free to play player same thing with the attila nevsky so if you do go this route where you go ahead and you get the pakal heralds then i would say you have a really good five army build you can go with the uh martel alex as your fourth build or you could put a 5511 Leonidas behind your Guan Yu that will free up your CPO. And then you can do something like CPO Martel for a more tanky march, or you could do CPO Alex for a more damaging march. And again, making sure that you use your Alex and your Isong Ye uh, in these five armies is priority for me because I think most of you guys probably have these, right? That's one thing that I think a lot of content creators forget for this game is that as you're progressing, you need things to focus on right we could all sit here and say that um Guan Yu Nevsky CPO and Boudicca are all the best commanders in the game but guess what you don't get those until you know Guan Yu comes in in season three of KVK right or at least he did when I was playing but now he's season of conquest only what I'm saying is that those are all season of conquest commanders and so it's like what are you gonna do for the first three KVKs you're just gonna sit there and hoard gold sculptures no you should be investing them get value out of them play the game have fun kill people in the first couple of KVKs right so who are you going to invest in the first three KVKs well you might as well invest in Esong and Alex those are the ones that give you the most value right so so this is just a nice five army build you can go for if you want to go for infantry and I do think that infantry is the best way to go if you are free to play now if you are not going to go infantry your second best option I think is cavalry and I made a video the other day where I talked about the cheapest uh, best equipment that you can get 
in the game and a lot of that equipment was cavalry so if you are free to play low spender and you're not going to go infantry you probably want to go cavalry and if that's the case then i think your fifth march should be a cavalry focused march in that event i would recommend doing an attila with your nevsky and then you want to save your william for your saladin okay um both of these are going to be a value investment five 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 one just leave them both there and now you have two infantry two cavalry and one archer now I know that's not really cavalry focused uh, because you do still have the same amount of infantry but again I do think that that is that that's an investment that you have to decide if you want to make like could you as a cavalry player skip CPO and just do Alex or skip Guan Yu and do something like that uh and then skip Harold in general and then just do like another cow like a third cavalry pair you could I just as a free-to-play player I don't know who I would recommend as a really solid cavalry investment right because you again I don't think you should invest in Zhang Yu as a free-to-play player same thing with Genghis obviously not Genghis right so that leaves you with well you can't use Minamoto because you're free to play so what you have Cao Cao and Chandra Gupta I, I don't know I just don't really recommend it even if you're cavalry focused I would say you still probably are going to have two infantry marches just based on the fact that you probably are going to have Alexander regardless all right now let's say you want your fifth March to be archers instead right and that's totally something that you could do in that case I would say you probably want to do a Nebu with Isong Ye and then you want to put your Boudicca probably with a Artemisia and this is because Artemisia does have a really powerful AoE um she is a bit tanky so she's less likely to be hit similar to Attila similar to Pakal a little bit more likely than those two that I mentioned before but she does have the defense tree she is more tanky for an archer commander and that is really what you want with Boudicca you want to pair her with somebody a little bit more tanky also she does have a self silence um which is unfortunate but when you expertise your Boudicca she does have the probability an 80 percent chance in fact to remove that self silence from Artemisia so I would probably do Artemisia primary just because again tanky but um I guess you could technically do Boudicca primary if you prefer that and Artemisia really you could do like a 5511 or a 5515 if you don't want to expertise her the expertise does actually give the enemy 15 percent skill damage for three seconds so that's like not really a buff that you want to give them but yeah I don't know it's up to you guys Artemisia is uh definitely the the least valuable on this on this list here um even amongst the other choices I would say Artemisia is definitely the last one that I would pick but if again you wanted two archer marches then you could do something like this now other honorable mentions for things that you could do is something like a Charles Martel with an Ethel fled that's a very very free to play friendly March that you could do as a, a sort of a fifth infantry builds you could also do something like a Mehmed um, that's also great both of these have relics that make them slightly better in season of conquest than they've ever been before and then just for fun I threw in a sixth March there in case you're like an insane free-to-play low spender and you I don't know but um yeah these are sort of the best marches that I would say for free to play in general okay uh that's if you were able to get everything that you wanted somehow even without spending I know that's not that realistic but I wanted to end off the video with that with that being said if you enjoyed the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the video get into the YouTube algorithm also comment down below what your favorite marches are as a free to play or low spender subscribe to the channel if you're new here and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.